have the person who is not diabetic and is healthy, running around the world feeling great, but wants to check some labs, hemoglobin A1C comes back a little bit elevated. Never knew this, never heard this before. So um, for anyone who doesn't know offhand, a hemoglobin A1C, we want it 5.6 or less, the lower, the better to improve your insulin sensitivity. So say it's higher than 5.6, so it's now in the pre-diabetes range, let's say it's 5.9 or 6. And they feel great, have no other medical problems, no problems. They feel, you know, they're, they're middle age, let's say, whatever age you want that to be, and um, pretty active, pretty healthy, full lives. So what would you recommend for this person now? Um, what are some tips that this person can do to get started to improve their insulin sensitivity? Okay, the first thing is I'm going to tell this person that you don't, you don't know how good you can feel right now. You, you've gotten to a steady state of what you think you feel good, but you don't know how bad you feel until you actually feel good. Okay. I love this. And so you're going to go on a journey to become more insulin sensitive. So I would say to that person, that is a huge, huge warning sign. And it's a gigantic blessing that you are finding out before something serious has happened. Right. You, if you don't take action, you are increasing your risk of the number one cause of death, which is heart disease, okay? Obviously, increasing your risk of developing type 2 diabetes and the complications that come with that. So it's time to take action. And step one, I would say learn. Start getting educated, right? Start, you know, tuning into these types of shows. Listen to the Mastering Diabetes audio experience on all podcast platforms. Follow us on YouTube, Instagram, right? Um, get educated and start learning and learn about what you're actually doing. I think the exercise of logging your food into nutrition software is so worth it. And it's so enlightening for most people. If you're not living with insulin dependent diabetes, it's not something I would ever recommend somebody do on an ongoing basis, right? It's an, it's an, it's an educational experience to do it for like a week or two and observe like, wow, I didn't know I was having that much total fat. I didn't know I was eating that much saturated fat, right? I didn't know my fiber intake was below the recommended amounts, which over 90% of the population is not consuming enough fiber. I, you know, these things start to become really obvious when you log your food and you now then have some objective targets to start working towards improving and you pair that with the education you're getting and then you're, you're on a really good trajectory towards turning this around and, you know, not letting anything develop to be worse than it needs to be. I love that. So this is a warning sign. It's a blessing. You're in, you're in for a good ride as you improve your health and start recording your food, um, get some education, join some of these um, sessions, listen to what's out there and start making some changes. 